Assembly instructions, Nacto Pony. Tools included, screwdriver, Phillips and slotted, two in one. Double open and wrench, 13 and 15 millimeter. Allen wrench, five and six millimeter. Tools needed, scissor and bike pump. Let's start assembling your Pony e-bike. Step one, unpack the e-bike. Pull the frame and all parts, charger, seat, tool kit, keys and fuse, manual, bolt caps, rear cushion, basket and pedals out of the cardboard box. Separate the bike from the foam padding. Cut off all zip ties with scissors while being extra careful as not to damage the paint or cut any wires or cables. Notice, the fuse is not used for assembly. Keep it in a safe place that it will be used for the replacement if the original fuse were damaged. Ensure all the following pieces are included with the Nacto Pony. Now stand the bike upright. Place some foam padding under the front fork if you place it on the ground, or put it on a bike assembly repair stand if you have one. We want to keep your bike looking new. Step 2. Assemble the front wheel. Loosen the axle nuts on the front wheel to make room for the front fork. Remove the brake cable from the linkage of the left arm while squeezing the brake arms to make room for the front wheel. Lift the front of the e-bike and lower the fork onto the wheel. Notice the axle should enter the fork dropouts fully. Line up the axle lock washers with the hole at each fork. Notice, these two special fork lock washers keep the wheel from falling off if the axle nuts ever loosen up. Tighten the axle nuts by hand. Once the lock washers are in place, tighten both axle nuts with the supplied double open end wrench. Notice, before doing the final tightening of the axle, Make sure the wheel is square and true with the forks. Push the black plastic caps onto the axle nuts. Put the brake cable back to the linkage of the left arm while squeezing the brake arms. Step 3. Install the handlebar. Insert the handlebar stem into the clamp. Install the handlebar stem together with the clamp onto the steer stem. Set the stem to the desired height but not exceed maximum height or minimum insertion. Align the stem so the handlebar is perpendicular to the front wheel. Tighten the bolt at the clamp with the supplied Allen wrench. Perform a twist test. Brace the front wheel between your legs. Switch hands so the opposite hands are pushing and pulling with about 20 pounds of force. Make sure the handlebar and front wheel are still properly aligned. Repeat the twist test, pulling and pushing with the opposite hands. Step 4. Install the front fender. Remove the fender mounting bolt from the fork arch with the supplied screwdriver and set aside. Place the fender in position. From the back of the front tire, pass the front fender mounting point under the front fork arch. Attach the fender to the fork arch. Pass the bolt through the fender mounting point and fork arch mounting point. Thread the lock nut at the bolt end and tighten with the supplied screwdriver. Attach the fender mounting arms to the front fork. Remove the mounting bolts from the fork. Pass the bolt through the arm mount and fork mounting points. Ensure the fender is centered and tighten both mounting bolts. Step 5. Adjust the front brake system. Notice, the adjustment of the front brake system is not easy. The following steps are only a general guide. If you are not sure you have the experience, skills, and tools to correctly perform all steps, consult a certified, reputable bike mechanic to assist with it. Pad adjustment. Remove the brake cable from the linkage of the left arm while squeezing the brake arms. Loosen the pad mount, bring the arm and pad to the rim, and adjust. Locate the pad to the top edge of the braking surface. Note, do not locate the pad to the top edge of the rim, it would hit the tire. Bring the pad gently to the rim and push with some mild force and secure the nut. The pad will tend to be self-aligning and put the convex concave washers where it needs to be correctly aligned with the two flat surfaces. The rim and the pad aligned. Hold the pad as you tighten the final tightness. Repeat the process on the other side. Put the brake cable back to the linkage of the left arm while squeezing the brake arms. Cable attachment. Before we draw the pads together, back out the barrel adjusters three or four turns so that we can have some fine tuning at the lever. Loosen the pinch bolt. Pull the arms together with your hand and pull the cable out with some mild force. It is only necessary to get the rim close. Then secure the pinch bolt. It should flatten and crush the cable. Set the pad clearance. Bring the barrel adjuster in toward the lever, giving more slack. Typically, the pads should feel like they are contacting the rotor at a minimum of half of the lever travel. Centering. 
Centering is done by subtle changes in the spring tension. There are screws to the return spring on both sides. By tightening the screw, you are increasing tension on whatever side you tighten. The end goal here is to keep even pad clearance on either side of the rim. Take the right pad, for example. We can tighten to make it far from the rim or loosen the screw to make it close. Step 6. Install the seat. Open the quick release lever by hinging it open fully. Insert the seat post into the seat tube. Adjust the seat post up or down to a comfortable height while ensuring the seat post is inserted into the frame past the minimum insertion point. Close the quick release lever to secure the seat post and check that it cannot move. If needed, use the thumb nut to add tension to the clamp so there is some resistance when the lever is in line with the clamp bolt. Step 7. Install the pedals. Locate the pedal with an R stamped into the end of the pedal axle, which indicate it is the right pedal. The right pedal goes on the crank on the right side of the bike. The remaining pedal with an L stamped onto the end of the axle is the left pedal. The left pedal goes on the crank on the left side of the bike. The right pedals are threaded to tighten by turning clockwise. The left pedals are reverse threaded and tighten counterclockwise. Carefully thread the pedal onto the crank by hand slowly. Further tighten with the supplied double open end wrench. Do not cross thread or damage the threads. Step 8. Install the cushion. Unlock the lock catch. Put the cushion on the rear carrier. Lock the lock catch. Step 9. Install the basket. Remove the four mounting bolts from the steer stem with the supplied screwdriver and set aside. Pass the bolt through the basket mounting point and the steer stem mount. Tighten with the supplied screwdriver. Step 10. Inflate the tires. Check that the tire beads and tires are evenly seated around the rims. Use a pump with a Schrader valve and a pressure gauge to inflate each tire to the recommended pressure indicated on the tire sidewall. Do not overinflate or underinflate the tires. Step 11. Charge the battery. Operate the electrical system when the battery has been adequately charged and the battery is secured to the frame mount. Your NACTO bike comes partially charged. We recommend you connect the charger input plug to the power outlet for three to four hours. The charger light will go from red to green when it is fully charged. Step 12. Ensure all hardware is tightened properly following recommended torque values. Step 13. Register the warranty card with us ASAP. Notice, keep proof of purchase in a safe place. Keep packing and your box for at least two weeks from the date of purchase, as we do not provide a box for returns if needed. Have fun and be safe.